When did you when did you actually get interested in computers and uh oh, yeah. and oh, yeah. oh, yeah. for one of them? Hey, 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 hey. Uh back in probably eighty one, maybe back in eighty one in the Bay Area, uh all my friends had uh color computers, T R S eighty, uh you know, Vic 20s, everybody had computers. And so finally, when uh, I conned, conned, I talked my dad into getting a PC, we got the original IBM PC. Dual double sided disk drives, color monitor, you know, it was like this $5,500 computer that now, you know, you can't even give away. And, uh, but you know, I was, the, I was the man on the block with that thing. I could, I could run Temple Apshai and, you know, uh, CGA color. And uh, there was this kid up the block who had a 300 baud acoustic coupler modem and he would call local Bay Area bulletin boards. There's only probably, in the Bay Area, you know, millions of people, there's probably only 30 or 40 bulletin boards back then, way back in the day. Everybody dialed in on their apples and, uh, and he opened up this whole world of, uh, you know, the online community and these, uh, the information that they were trading and talking about and uh, the idea that, you know, you could sort of virtually I hate that term, but you know, virtually talk with people and know people all around the country. And as soon as that happened, you know, bam, eye opener. I was, I was hooked. And ever since then, uh, I've been really into communications and technology, talking with people around the world. It's great. I mean, you can have friends all over the world. You go to a city to visit, you know people, uh, you get information, gossip about things uh, that just don't ever hit the newspaper. I, you know, I find newspaper very limiting. I don't watch TV. Um, maybe a couple hours a week when I'm bored at night. Uh, but you know, you can get all of your informational needs on the computer in a much more contextual and in-depth method. And you know, I mean, that was sort of, that was sort of my, my uh, I don't know what to call it, fuck. My point when I realized things were not the way they were. I mean, that was not the way things were presented to me by the establishment. As soon as I started talking to other people, frankly, on the computer where age wasn't a consideration, your appearance wasn't a consideration, uh, you know, that was the eye-opener that, yes, you can be on equal footing with anybody in the world. And, and since then, you know, I've, I've viewed society differently than Joe Sixpack. <laughs> and uh, so it's really the community and the culture that, that attracted you? Yeah, the, 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 the culture is very, uh, the community is very, they're all very intelligent. Um, they're all motivated, driven, they're inquisitive. They love to figure out why things work, how they work. It doesn't have to be just computers. It could be car stereos. It could be machinery. I mean, a lot of these people, uh, you know, are into like rock climbing. So they're all into the technical equipment and the expertise or ski equipment or whatever it is. I mean, they love to know why things work, how they work, get an understanding of not just, you know, I punch this button and the light goes on. They want to know the theory behind it. You know, why is the light going on? How long will it stay on for? What can I do? Can I get two lights on? Um, and when you surround yourself by those kinds of people, uh, the possibilities are endless and you always are having a good time. It's, you never feel self-constrained or limited. So, so when you're in college, what sort of, what sort of stuff were you doing? What sort of, were, you, were you hacking yourself? Or were you... Oh, no, I was running a bulletin board in college. It was kind of tough because every year the number would have to change as you change dorm rooms. But I had this uh, international uh, bulletin board. Uh, my phone bills must have been three fifty, four hundred 400 bucks a month. Uh, had, we had connections in, uh, in all over Europe, uh, Canada, Mexico, all over the United States. Uh, you know, I'd be getting messages from people, and, and, and back then, you know, the Berlin Wall had just recently fallen, so we're getting chatting with people, like at the, the first couple of bulletin boards in, in Russia were coming online and joining some of these uh, kind of underground networks, and uh, yeah, it was, it was really good fun. And of course, during the day, you went to classes and just went to classes during the day. So, uh, you know, other people you know, played basketball or made pottery or whatever they do in college or drank and uh, I ran a bulletin board. What, what are you doing now? Um, now I pretty much do security consulting, uh, limited penetration, uh, auditing, external threat analysis, um, uh, some awareness training, we'll go to companies and tell them what their threats are, you know, what they should be concerned about. There's so much mis uh, misinformation and a misconception about you know, the quote hacker threat, when in reality the largest, biggest, most credible threat is your internal employees. And uh, if you can come overcome that misconception, you can really learn how to spend like your limited bucks getting the most protection. So, I do that. <laughs> so, I mean, 
how uh, how much do you think the corporate world knows about hacking and computer security? Do you think they're pretty? Advanced? They're aware. Oh no, I mean the Fortune 500. They're aware, and they so the Fortune 100 definitely have. It's it's the middle-sized companies that don't have the budget to have a big IS staff. I mean, for them, it's do we get two print servers or do we get a firewall? I mean, it's limited budget, but they're just as much at risk as anybody else. And so it's, uh, it's in those kind of situations where uh, they're, they're frightened. They don't know what to do. I mean, if it's a virtual startup company and all their property and uh, equity is in uh, intellectual property and they can't protect it, that means at any given time their whole company could collapse if it was stolen by a competitor. And uh, it's kind of an interesting situation. And, uh, and you no longer consider yourself a hacker? Or? Well, yeah, hacking is a, hacking's a bad term now. Uh, instead of the media just calling computer criminals computer criminals, they call them hackers. And because of that, legitimate hackers now are considered computer criminals. And uh, so, yeah, if you want to get a job, don't call yourself a hacker, basically, is what I've learned over the last couple of years. So, you know, it's just the way things are. Okay, great. Do you want to say anything about Kevin Paulson? Um, I'm trying to think of anything, anything interesting going on. Probably not. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah.